Duster, we launched just a short of two years ago. Uh, in those two years, we've sold just over 8,000 units. Uh, essentially, one in five vehicles sold in that segment has been a Duster since, since launch. Um, but not only locally, globally, it has been the best-selling car for Renault. In 2014, we sold 394,000 Dusters globally, uh, representing the highest single sales volume for a model in the entire Renault lineup. It's changed from every angle. The Renault Diamond logo is now larger and more prominent on the grill. Uh, it also has blacked out headlights. Uh, moving around to the side, it has a larger, chunkier roof railing, which is also embossed with the dust of, of branding. Then moving around to the back, the large chrome tailpiece cover has been replaced with a, a plastic more in line with global trends. In addition, the interior upholstery has been changed. It's been updated to a newer, more modern fabric. And we've also added the option of leather as an option on the dynamic specification of the vehicle. We did a lot of research, so we spoke to a lot of existing Duster customers and we asked them, what is it that you love about your Duster? And the, probably the single biggest point that they enjoy about their cars is the fuel economy. So we, we've had customers achieving over a thousand kilometers on a 50 litre tank. So we said, well, we've taken this engine, we've made it a little bit better in terms of fuel consumption uh, without sacrificing any power or, or, or capabilities of the car. Um, let's build an event around that. And Total hasn't run an economy run for a while and we thought this would be a nice fit. So we've, we've got the team that used to run that event um, and we approached them and we put it together and it has been a little bit adventurous and, and to be honest we weren't sure how it would go down. It's definitely quite different from the normal gymkhanas and driving around racetracks or driving to your lunch stop and having lunch and then carrying on. So it, it makes a welcome change. I think in the current economic uh, climate, it's a good thing for manufacturers and journalists to participate and to make sure that we, we also show the public that we can save on fuel also. Brent and I work very well together, so we've already sort of determined who's doing what. We've both got our own responsibilities. So he's got to worry about the driving. I've got to make sure he doesn't, you know, skip any stations. Yeah, there's... Uh, the way and <laughs> that he's in time. There's a lot of concentration involved as well, you know, maintaining the, the smooth throttle inputs and, and making sure you're not too slow or too fast or too hasty with what you do. It's a lot of concentration. Once all the tanks were filled to the brim and securely sealed, the convoy of 15 dusters set off on their mission for efficiency. Each co-driver was supplied with a route guide, which contained directions to, as well as arrival times at the various marshalling points. For their part, the drivers had to follow these instructions to the letter, while also driving economically, something that was made a great deal easier thanks to the dusters' engine upgrades. We've, because of the sourcing change, been able to source the vehicles from Romania, uh, we've been able to upgrade the 1.5 DCI Dynamic 4x2 with the Euro 5 compliant engine. It reduces the fuel consumption down to 4.8 litres per 100 kilometres, which is a marked improvement over the, over the old unit, which was still Euro 4 compliant. A lunchtime break at the Val Dam brought the team's welcome respite and a chance to regroup. We've actually had a, quite a good run, apart from the fact that we got stuck behind a few very large trucks and we lost about five minutes and um, we were told not to actually make it up. But it's, um, it's proving quite tricky. No, it's going fine, it's going great. My navigator is giving me a bit of problem, but otherwise I'm good. Uh, giving you a problem? <laughs> I'm just trying to hold him back. He just wants to speed up the whole time. He's just trying to save fuel, but luckily we got no penalty so far. So if we can keep it that way, we should be in with the show. The 300 kilometer route gave everyone an opportunity to sample the cars on varying road surfaces, from pockmarked tar to washboard gravel. I think the car really needs, especially the 4x2, needs some stability control, because um, it seemed to be fishtailing quite a bit when we were driving down the gravel roads. And there were a few noises going along the way, but that's to be expected also, there were some serious ditches and bottles that we went over. But as an all-rounder, I think it did pretty well. Duster is, you get exactly what you see, so it's an unpretentious, affordable, 
entry point into the SUV lifestyle. It has the space and capabilities of a conventional SUV, uh, and yet it brings it at a price point which is really attractive. We think that it's going to go from strength to strength with the new model. I don't think we're going to stray too far from that what has been so far a winning formula. And speaking of winning formulas, Ruben and Segi came up with their very own, achieving an average fuel consumption of 5.8 litres per 100 kilometres. That's just one litre more than Renault's claimed figure. Mission efficiency accomplished.